nerderotic.com. Woke Hollywood is about to complete its worst year, and the question is, what have they learned? Well, why don't you join me, you over 927,000 Awakening Wonders, and let's find out. Well, after a year of flops, where only one 2023 movie with a budget of over $200 million had made a profit so far this year, and that was written a month ago, and that hasn't changed. To be fair, Woke Hollywood was already in decline in 2022, but this was the year they were supposed to return to form. Since it was the first time since COVID, they would have a full theatrical release schedule. Unfortunately, that full theatrical release schedule was full of flops. Just to name a few, Ant-Man flopped, Renfield flopped, The Creator flopped, Hypnotic flopped, Little Mermaid underperformed, I mean flopped, Elemental underperformed, I mean flopped, Haunted Mansion flopped, Wish flopped, Freelance flopped, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery flopped, The Marvels was a mega flop, Expendables 4 flopped, and the entire DCEU flopped. Now, there is one to go, but I have no doubt that Aquaman 2 will be the very first box office plop. Now, were all of those films giant woke disasters? Of course not. But overall, woke Hollywood fatigue was a contributing factor to their failure, something Tinseltown refuses to admit to this very day. You want to know what else doesn't help? One of the worst time strikes in history. Now, we all thought it would help our sanity by keeping actors from going on the red carpets and sounding like idiots, but somehow they still managed. And why was it the worst time strike in history? Well, maybe they should have struck before the streaming bubble burst. Unfortunately for the WGA and the Film Actors Guild, this allowed the producers time, who were previously spending money like a coke fiend in Vegas, to sober up and realize that they're in a lot of trouble. How much trouble? Well, let's just talk about three of the bigger studios. Things are so bad, the studio that owns DC Comics and has the distribution rights to things like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Game of Thrones, Warner Brothers, might be flirting with bankruptcy? And Sherry Redstone, who has the controlling stake in a studio that released Top Gun Maverick just a couple of years ago and owns the Sheridan verse, might be bought out. Also, the investors could flip the assets, which may include Star Trek. Then, of course, there's Disney. And what can I say that I haven't said already? Well, I won't have to say anything because Elon's back. Unfortunately, Disney is deeply infected with, with the woke <laughs> mind virus. In fact, if you ask an AI what is the most woke company on earth, it's Disney. <laughs> and that doesn't even cover the half of it. Disney is almost going to lose a billion dollars on their flops alone. And according to CNBC, the only streamer technically to turn a profit is Netflix. So this is indeed the year well after Hollywood got woke where they finally went broke. So I ask you again, dear viewer, has Hollywood learned its lesson? Has it seen the error of their ways? Have they decided to dial down all the divisive woke entertainment and, I don't know, entertain people? No. Now we know most of the theatrical releases have been delayed till 2025, and it's not looking good for the theaters, but I could be wrong. There are a couple of movies coming down the pike that could get the ticket buyers running back, like Civil War. Civil War. Oh, man. You better believe I'm excited. That's right, Tim. Civil War. 19 states have seceded. The United States Army ramps up activity. Citizens of America, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California. What? A perfect film for what will be a contentious election year in a divided America. It's obviously a fantasy because Texas isn't allying itself with California for anything. Now, this film comes from Alex Garland, who's written some films that people like. But is it going to be the 28 Days Later Alex Garland or the men Alex Garland? I don't know. Civil War could be compelling if they took a balanced yet scathing approach towards the division in America, but I think the reality is it's going to be told through the lens of Trump derangement syndrome because that's new, but at least it gave birth to a pretty good meme. Well, you're American, okay? Okay. What kind of American are you? So if yet another nihilistic, post-apocalyptic look at a divided America from the perspective of the woke Hollywood bubble isn't good enough for you, how about this? Welcome to the American Society of Magical Negroes. Uh, what did she say? Yeah, Gary, uh, she said the American Society of Magical Negroes. That's what I thought you said, and considering the title and the premise, 
this is the type of film some people out there probably think I shouldn't be talking about, which means I'm going to talk about it. Now, to be fair, this is a well-known Hollywood trope that has been going on for years that continues to this very day. The only difference is, I would argue, you could replace the word magical with gay, but it doesn't mean the movie's going to be bad or divisive or on the nose, right? I know you can feel their discomfort, Aaron. Watching you walk through a room full of white people was the most painful thing I've ever seen. Just kidding. I mean, if you're not counting the trailer for the trailer, that is 11 seconds into the real trailer. All right, all right. Maybe that's the only joke. Let's continue. I don't want to take you to a job interview. Welcome to the American Society of Magical Negroes. Sounds like they're really daring people to say magical Negroes. I don't really understand. It's easier said. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Sure. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. You gotta be fucking kidding. Well, maybe that's the only other joke. White people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's why we fight white discomfort every day. When I hear that, I can't help but think about Jar Jar Abrams' organization Bad Reboot saying enough white comfort while our country was burning down during the summer of love. Anyway, does that say white tears? Why doesn't it say comfort? Oh, well, I know why, because... That's why it? Because the happier they are, the safer we are. Oh, so it is going to be that bad on the nose and divisive. I haven't seen race baiting sh like this since that Watchmen TV show that was so popular it was canceled after one season. Then the trailer devolves into some sort of rom-com where the magical Negroes and incredibly non-threatening bordering on a feminine protagonist falls for his client's girlfriend. The name is a little updating, maybe like magical black people or I guess that doesn't have the same ring. After that, the trailer decides to dial back the abject racism and just devolve into your average garden variety Hollywood cringe, except for this. I've always felt like it's my job to make white people feel comfortable and here it literally is, but maybe it shouldn't be. Interesting, satirizing a common Hollywood trope while being a commentary on racism while being racist. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for us. Well, after Woke Hollywood's worst year, it's clear they've learned absolutely nothing but there is some good news thanks to the WGA and Film Actors Guild strike we won't get as much of it now I know a lot of us out there are sick to death of how divisive Hollywood has been we don't want a repeat of 2020 but it looks like Tinseltown does and that's the beauty of free speech and expression they're allowed to make stuff like this, and we're allowed to use our greatest weapon, mocking it into oblivion. At time of recording, the ratio for the American Society of Magical Negroes is a pathetic 3,600 likes on a video with 5.5 million views to 34,000 dislikes. And the comments are nothing short of a white pill moment. I like how regardless if you're white or black, you're all saying, um... What the fuck? I get it now. This is how we stop racism by making modern entertainment media so terrible that we all come together to trash it. Thank you, Kobe LeBee or LeBai. Your lack of creative talent has brought us all together. All right, we'll give some land to the n****s and the chicks, but we don't want the Irish. Oh, prairie. Everybody. Actually, I'd like to thank you all for making a movie so blatantly racist and dislikable that we can all come together no matter what creed in our sheer awe of its stupidity. That is certainly a feat. It really is, but never underestimate the stupidity of Woke Hollywood. We also get a little wisdom. The demand for racism is way higher than the supply. Don't let the elites continue to divide us. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph! Racism is alive and well in the film industry, apparently. No apparently there. But then again, we already knew that. It's good to have such an overt example of how the film industry really thinks. Then we have the now classic, I love the part troll from the Rings of Power days. I love the part where Pootie Tang jumps out of a DeLorean and yells, what we do in life echoes in eternity. And I especially love the part where Harry says Wakanda forever. I was really moved when they all came together at the end to save Rock Ridge. And this goes on and on, but we'll 
end it with the best one. Still waiting on a magical black person to show up and cover me from watching this trailer. Now, personally, I think this would have been a better version of the movie. There can be only one magical Negro. Again, woke Hollywood always seems to learn the wrong lessons, but thanks to the opportunity given by the Film Actors Guild and the Writers Guild for going on strike for so long, it's gonna open the door for everyone else. You want a canary in the coal mine, Hollywood? It's the American comic book industry who got woke, went broke, and then got their ass kicked by manga. The same thing is coming for you. But by all means, keep it up. I'm all for acceleration. Bring on Civil War, bring on. The American Society of Magical Negroes. Get those members of the Film Actors Guild back out on those red carpets and award shows so the adult pretenders can share their wisdom. We vote, we vote our values and our rights. We vote our ideals as Americans in order to form what? A more perfect union. And a more perfect union includes he, him, she, her, they, them. It's no offense, but it sounds like some f***ing <laughs> commie gobbledygook. Isn't it just time for women to run the planet? I, I mean, I don't know what else to do because we, men, uh, we've been running the show since, what, 10,000 BC? Something like that. And we're not doing so good, so... Please, can you guys just take over? Now, what we've got here is a scrotum and nothing else. Things have gotten so bad that, again, the studio that released Barbie, the number one film in the world, Warner Brothers, is flirting with bankruptcy. The New York Times wrote basically Disney's obituary today, and the shills like Steve Weintraub from Collider are running to protect their masters. Like, please stop writing the worst movie of the year lists. No one sets out to make bad movies. So many people work their asses off and try to do the best job they can, so let's not celebrate when and something doesn't work and stuff. Far be it for me to point out, Steve, that your own website Collider does plenty of top 10 worst lists. But I hear you, Steven, and I have chosen not to listen because it just so happens that I'm gonna be doing a top five woke Hollywood disasters video at the end of the year. The only difficult part is getting it down to five because this has been woke Hollywood's worst year and we have so much to choose from. So as woke Hollywood has learned nothing, we have learned quite a bit. There's no sense in getting angry anymore because that's what they want. What works much better is the healing and mocking power of laughter. I've said in the past that the message divides and good stories bring us together, and that remains true, but I'd like to add one thing. It turns out bad stories bring us together too. NerdErotics.com If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video.